Uh, the ad hoc committee came together after Sansara Taylor's long scheduled presentation to the Ethical Humanist Society of Chicago was canceled with less than 10 days notice, justified by gross distortions of her positions amidst a climate of fear promoted by the people who canceled her talk. Our committee came together because we felt strongly, and we feel strongly, that the subsequent criminal charges against Gregory Coger are unfounded, outrageous, and must be dropped. There's a lot more information about this at uh, our committee table at the door, and I hope you all pick it up and uh, sign up to become part of this effort. The fact of the matter is that Gregory should be welcomed by people who espouse humanist values as the Ethical Humanist Society claims, not defending himself against them. The Ethical Humanist Society defines itself as being committed, quote, to the worth and dignity of an individual and to treating each human being so as to bring out the best in her or him, end quote. Having grown up under conditions like millions of youth in this country that virtually drove him into gang life to, in order to survive, Gregory served time and has transformed his life, becoming a paralegal in a loop law firm, and more importantly, becoming a person dedicated full time to the cause of human rights and emancipating all of humanity. Really an inspiring person. On November 1st, Gregory was at a public meeting documenting Sansara Taylor as she made a promised brief statement to object to the circumstances relating to the cancellation of her lecture and to announce an alternate venue for all those wishing to attend. For no discernible reason, and certainly not for interests of public safety, the president of the Ethical Humanist Society instructed the Skokie police to grab Gregory out of an otherwise peaceful public gathering and made a scene that ended with Gregory being brutally arrested, maced, and charged with criminal trespass. The actions of the Skokie Police and the Ethical Humanist Society Board represent yet another instance of suppressing critical thought and those who insist on space for it. And their actions cannot go unchallenged. This is about what ideas will be allowed to circulate in society and what ideas will be suppressed. It is also about helping someone who deserves our help and about standing up to power. The ad hoc committee understands that what happened at the Ethical Humanist Society is part of a larger phenomena that must be urgently opposed. And that's why we have invited speakers here tonight who have faced similar cancellations of speeches, of scheduled speeches, public distortions of their political positions and beliefs, and attempted marginalization of their ideas and concerns. Our purpose is not only to examine and evaluate these threats to serious consideration of ideas that challenge the status quo, but also to consider how we can oppose and turn them around as well. About Gregory and, and his hearing coming up on the 28th. And I will say that, that it matters tremendously for the life of Gregory, who is a wonderful person, who volunteered. I mean, he came out of prison. He didn't say, okay, I'm, I got my chance at the American dream. I'm gonna think only about myself and, and get as best I can. He actually, you know, He's, he's volunteered to be part of changing the world and learning more about it, and, and he videotaped. I mean, can you imagine this, this, this suppression? You want to talk about the information age. If I had been doing something outrageous or egregious at the ethical human society, you'd think they'd want it on film. You'd think they'd tell Gregory, go ahead, keep filming, keep filming, and they'd tell the police, go get her. But that's not what they did. They never asked me to leave. They never asked the police to intervene with me. They never asked me to stop speaking. But they went after the video. They went after the one person making a documentation of, of their shameful activities and the truthfulness of what I was saying. And Gregory is a wonderful person, but he, I, and I would say, had he been resisting their, you know, injustice, that'd be great. He should be defended, but he wasn't even resisting. He was filming. He was standing there peacefully, silently, with his cell phone camera, and they brutalized him. And now his future's at stake. So it matters to support for that, but it also matters on the level of the whole ice sheet, the whole disinvitation, the whole suppression of radical voices, the whole curtailment of critical thinking that's going on in this country, that when they make an example out of somebody, when they disinvite people, when they threaten somebody's life like they did with Mark, 
when they demonize people on TV and reduce them to a caricature, like they've done with Bill, when they do these kinds of things, it has to be answered. Because it is, like Bill said, it's both, I would say it's both that person they're going after, but it's also the example that you said for many other people and a chill that they're trying to impose. And, and so if we value critical thought, if we value room for dissent, if we value the ability to explore a different world, when somebody faces charges on outrageous grounds as Gregory did, he needs to be supported and defended. And that too sends, sends an example and rallies people forward and gives them courage to voice their own opinion. And if he's allowed to be you know, imprisoned or prosecuted further, that also sends an example. So right now there are stakes for us in this case.